But taking a look at the public's concerns about fracking, my goodness, it, it's going to contaminate my groundwater. As you saw in the picture that's shown there on the left, yeah, fracking is real close to groundwater. No, it isn't. The depiction on the right is a better, is a better example. Fracking is thousands of feet to miles away from the groundwater. And I'm going to go over well design on the next slide and show you why it's not a concern. The next concern is that I am blasting the earth and the frack goes everywhere. Well, the truth of the matter is it doesn't. Prior to doing a frack, we actually measure the strength of the earth at spots as we construct the well and also at spots before we do the frack. It's called a prefrack. You do a prefrack and you actually generate a fracture for a short period and that goes into your modeling. And that modeling is done real time on the job. We'll do it immediately, an hour or two before the main frack. We'll execute that work. We'll take that actual pressure required to frack the rock at that exact spot into our rock mechanics models and we actually design our job on the fly. The modeling and the computing capability is phenomenal and you can actually design your frack so the frack goes where you want it to go. Because one thing you don't want to do on a frack is have it get away from you and now I'm fracking out beyond where the oil and gas are. Now I'm exposing myself to other fluids, typically salt water, that's now going to contaminate my well. Good God, that's the last thing I want. Uh, it's going to really impact my productivity and the overall cost of the job. The next thing is like the overall industrial impact. You know, we see the picture of the rig and, and those pads. That's not permanent. A well can actually be drilled in days, and the total time required to drill up a pad is now measured in months. So it is a temporary impact. It's still an impact on the community, but it is temporary. If you ever get the chance to drive north on uh, I-25, or it's 15, I lost track, north of Denver. I'm always amazed at the size of the pads that are there. They put very nice trees around it and everything, and I think millions of people drive by those, or drive by those frack pads, and they don't even know what they are, because that's how well they blend in after the job is done. So the depiction on the right with just the pad and, and some what are called Christmas trees on the top, that, that's the norm. The industrial impact is very short-lived. So earthquakes and fracking, real quick, Rock Mechanics 101. There's a rock, it's got grains of sand, and it's got fluid in between it, and the fluid could be either water, oil, or gas. And all sedimentary rocks have grains, either silt or clay in the more shale or, or sand, grains of sand. And they all have to support what I call the stuff above, the overburden. And there's two ways that that overburden is supported. There's the fluid pressure in the actual pores, and then there's the grain-to-grain -grain stress between the rock grains. So that's it. That's all you have to support that load. And as you go ahead and you generate a frack, you have to put enough pressure, hydraulic pressure, from your fluid in your pumps to exceed the fracture pressure of the rock, which is a combination of the pressure in the fluid plus the stress in the grains of sand. And when you do that, you are going to generate small earthquakes. They are too small to be felt on the surface unless you have a seismograph. And they will actually put seismophones around in a field to actually determine exactly where they're fracking. You can also put tracers, uh, chemical tracers, that you can read with various tools to actually evaluate where your frack went. And long term, once the well produces enough volume of fluid that exceeds the volume of water and sand that you put in to frack the well, once you've taken more material out than you've put in, you've lowered the overall stress state of the system. And you can make an argument that on a regional basis, you've actually decreased the tendency for earthquakes and not increased it long term. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberty, and more videos like this one. Mm -hmm.